deadly weapon, firearm, or pepper spray. And the pepper spray definition contained in this draft is the same as the earlier bill this committee sent out dealing with pepper spray. At the bill uh, that allowed a pepper spray on Capitol grounds? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, on page one of 96, um, section A, it says, except as provided by the provisions of this section and provisions 8125 of this code, neither. You see that right there? Yes, sir. Okay. Does that basically, with the elimination of that part of the code, does that basically take out of the hands of any municipality any type of restriction or regulation of deadly weapons? Yes, sir. Or it can't, they can't be inconsistent with state law on those issues. And then, so this bill allegedly addresses the inconsistencies. It defines or expands the definition of deadly weapon to include for example, pepper spray. And then on page four of the bill, it eliminates the only restriction that a city may have to regulate firearms, correct? Well, it doesn't include, it does not include pepper spray under the, uh, as a deadly weapon. That's why it's broken out the way it is. But otherwise, the, the answer is yes. Sure, and, it, and again, it eliminates the only restriction or regulation that the cities have over firearms, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Senator from Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tom, I'm correct uh, that this has no bearing on the campus carry issue that we addressed last session. Am I right about that? Since college campuses I'm are- not intentionally. I'm just trying to think if there's a circumstance where- College campuses are state property, right? Or private property, so the answer would be no. Thank you. Other questions of council? If not, we're open for discussion of or amendments to the bill. Senator, Senator from the 8th, Kanawha. Yeah, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment and I'm trying to, uh, I had it down for the comm sub, and I'm trying to find it for the comm sub or the comm sub. So if you just if you bear with me for just a moment. I think it's on uh, page three, line 37, and it goes to the issue of um, handguns in uh, recreational centers. So I guess the amendment would be the um, basically, the amendment would allow restriction of, of handguns in recreational centers. Wait, 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 are we in, are we in amendment phase? Uh, we are. Oh. We are. Uh, so, uh, to the senator from the 8th, uh, Kanawha, I'm wondering if I see language in the bill, this is current code, in subsection, subsection C, subdivision 2 on page 2, which addresses its current law, it allows municipality to enact an ordinance that prohibits a person from carrying a deadly weapon, firearm, or pepper spray uh, openly, et cetera, municipally owned recreational facility, provided a person may not prohibit a person with a handgun permit from carrying a firearm into a rec facility and securely storing the firearm out of view. I wonder if that's, is that where your amendment is key to? Yes, I guess you would strike everything after pepper spray. So from line 37 to 41. O okay. Um, so would the Senator from Kanawha just read uh, what would replace that language then? Well, nothing would, re would replace it. I guess it would just be stricken. A, mus a municipality may prohibit or regulate the carrying or possessing of a firearm, deadly weapon, firearm, or pepper spray, period. Okay. Senator from the 8th moves to amend the proposed committee substitute for the committee substitute on uh, page 2. It would be within subsection C, subdivision 2, 
lines 26, 27, so that that uh, subdivision would read, a, mis a municipality may enact and enforce an ordinance or ordinances that prohibit a person from carrying or possessing a firearm, or excuse I, me, a deadly weapon, firearm, or pepper spray. I'm sorry, M Mr. Uh, Chairman, let me correct myself here. What, what I would do, or what the amendment seeks to do is to, on page two, on line 28, instead of a colon at facility, put period and strike the remainder of that paragraph. Okay, I got it. The proviso, strike the proviso. So Senator from the 8th moves to amend the bill on page two, subsection C, subdivision two, line 28, by changing the colon after the word facility to a period and striking the remainder of that uh, paragraph through line 32. Senator wish to speak to his amendment. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think that um, as far as this bill's concerned, I've heard out from a lot of different folks, people for and against the bill. Um, I voted against the, the bill on government organizations, and since then, I've been told that a major issue or the, or from, from the proponents of the bill um, is that it's not fair or right for someone to carry into a public event um, without a permit and then be subject to the laws that they didn't know them. Further, I've been told, and, and I understand the, um, the argument that if you're going to an event like Live on the Levee and you don't have a permit, but yet you have to walk four or five blocks to get to the event, then you should still be able to carry your firearm. And I, I, wanna, I recognize that as an argument in support of this bill so the reason why I would like to amend the bill to uh, create uh, protection for uh, folks at recreational centers is that argument, as far as it applies, is addressed because we're talking about fixed areas uh, where, in fact, children play. They're after school programs. It's where our seniors commune. Um, when I was much, much younger, I used to spend my afternoons after school and summers at Chandler Recreational Center um, and a lot of those kids unfortunately were coming from homes that had firearms and that there were abuse but they could feel safe at the recreational center um, and so I think it's a reasonable um, amendment to for the safety of those students and our seniors and um, I ask for adoption of the amendment thank you Thank you. Are there others who desire to speak to the amendment offered by the Senator from the 8th? Senator from Brook. Thank you, Chairman. Question to Council. Um, council, I'm trying to wrap my head around um, the Senator's amendment, and perhaps you can help. So we're in sub 2, starting on line 26, there on page 2. Yes. So as current law stands right now, a municipality can prohibit someone from carrying, and we'll just stick with firearm because it's easy, from carrying in a, a firearm that is not concealed. So City X can say you cannot carry a firearm into the rec center that is not concealed. Uh, the senator is correct. All right, so what the gentleman's amendment then seeks to do <coughs> because we're getting rid of everything after the, the proviso. So someone could be complying with the terms of carrying a firearm into the rec center by doing so in a concealed manner and then putting it into, I mean, I guess, putting it into a, a locker and then locking the locker. Is that what the proviso there currently allows someone to do? What the proviso does in council's opinion, Senator, is say if one has a valid concealed carry permit, you can take the firearm in as long as you put it in the locker. Uh, the proposed amendment, uh, if, I, if I understand it correctly, <coughs> would only, if were the amendment adopted, I'm not sure about the lawfully concealed on 28. I'm not exactly so, sure what that means. So I could, so let's say I go to the rec center 
and I am carrying concealed, uh, carrying a firearm concealed. It, and so therefore I wouldn't be running afoul of the first part of that subdivision. Yes, sir. So then something happens and say, hey, Ryan, do you, uh, you want to ref the game tonight? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm not going to ref the game with a carrying a firearm. So I would put it in the locker and lock the locker, but then I could be held liable under a city's ordinance then because I no longer have that immunity from being able to bring it in and secure it and store it, or, and store it away. Is that correct? Uh, in this hypo, you do have a concealed carry permit? Correct. I believe you're right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator from Harrison County. Are there others who desire to speak to the amendment offered by the Senator uh, from the 8th? Senator from the 8th wish to say anything further regarding the, his, what Senator from Brooks? Uh, yes. Senator may proceed. Senator from Brooks. Respectfully, have to uh, disagree with my, my friend from uh, the eighth. Uh, the hypothetical that I just laid out uh, would open somebody up to some immunity that they currently are afforded by what's in state law. That if you showed up, you're, you have a, a concealed carry permit, uh, you're carrying concealed, but then circumstances change while you're at the rec center, and if you had to ref a basketball game or a myriad of different things, um, currently you'd be allowed to store that in a locker or I mean, it, it, you could even put it in someone's office there if they lock the door, uh, and you would be granted that, that immunity by law. But if the gentleman's amendment were, were to be adopted, it, despite the fact that I was obeying the law in the other manners that I was, that I had a valid permit, that I was carrying concealed, <coughs> uh, I would run afoul of perhaps a, a, an ordinance that was set up that way. Uh, so uh, for those reasons, I'd have to respectfully um, oppose the gentleman's amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Are there others who desire to speak to the amendment before I recognize the senator from the 8th to close debate? If not, senator from the 8th wish to close debate? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And, and I appreciate the, um, the input from the senator from Brooke. I think that the point of the amendment was to, um, regardless of the variation, is to prohibit um, guns in recreational centers. And I understand the conflict addressed, but the, the point is that there are some places um, wherein it, for the safety of the individuals in, in closed in spaces like recre recreational centers, that there are some places where firearms can be restricted constitutionally. We were here just yesterday talking about legal advertisements and the attorney uh, on behalf or in support of that particular bill, Mr. Lynn spoke eloquently about restrictions on free speech, which there are. And of course, there are restrictions, as counsel and all the attorneys in the room know, restrictions to the Fourth Amendment, uh, the rights against search and seizures. Um, so there are circumstances wherein there should not be, or at least the people at recreational centers should not feel threatened by firearms, and I supported the amendment. Thank you. Question before the committee is on the uh, adoption of the amendment offered by the senator from the 8th. All in favor of the senator's amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. No's appear to have it. No's do have it. I declare it less, I declare the amendment rejected. Are there further amendments? Further discussion? Senator from Harrison. Thank you. Tom, I uh, just happened to notice this. There, we interchangeably use in this bill concealed firearm permit and concealed firearm license. Is that inconsistent? No, I, it's, it's bad drafting, but it's not inconsistent. They are the same thing. You don't think we need to correct that? Because I thought it was referred to as permit in the statute, and I no, just wouldn't want there to be any confusion. I, I don't ever remember seeing it as concealed weapon license. I think the senator is correct. But I, don't, I think it is stylistic. It's not necessary. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna rely on you, Tom. If it's, I was gonna make a just a conceptual amendment, ask you to change 
all the places where it said concealed weapons license to conceal weapons permit. Council's perfectly amenable to whatever the body wants to do. I know. That. Don't pin us down. It may be the other way around. Well, <laughs> we, okay. What are, how about if I offer a conceptual amendment that whatever way it is stated in the statute currently, whether it be concealed weapons permit or concealed weapons license, that we restate 96 correctly and consistently throughout. Yeah, and I, I don't know that that has to be an amendment. I think it would be, um, yeah, it's, it's almost technical. And so I, I think we'll, we'll all join in your request to have council double check that. Okay. If this bill is reported to the floor, uh, if it's not, we'll, we'll deploy his time on other matters. Uh, okay, other discussion, other amendments? If not, Chair will recognize the Senator from Brook County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the committee substitute for the committee substitute for Senate Bill 96 be reported to the full Senate with a recommend. Uh, uh, Senator Mr. from Brook. We uh, unanimous consent to rescind my motion. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we agree to the language of the committee substitute for the committee substitute. Question for the committee is the motion of the Senator from Brook County that we agree upon the language of the proposed committee substitute for the committee substitute for Senate Bill 96. Is there discussion regarding that motion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the motion adopted and the language agreed upon. Senator from Brook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now I move that the committee substitute for the committee substitute for Senate Bill 96 be reported to the full Senate with the recommendation that it do pass. Question is on the motion to report the bill. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the motion adopted and the bill will be reported. Okay, let's go now to the next.